Hi everyone, welcome to the third video of the four part data architecture interview series. This video will focus on 10 data warehousing questions and answers. For those who are new, would like to mention that these are real mostly scenario based interview questions and not theoretical ones. So let's get started. So our very first question in this video is when to build a data warehouse. Okay. So here the intent of asking the question is checking your basics, whether or not if you are aware of scenarios and purpose of a data warehouse. The trick to answer this question is to get as real as possible and mention your real world examples. So what all scenarios can we mention? If there are multiple versions of same data flowing around in the line of business, then there is a need to establish a trusted system or record and hence a data warehouse. Secondly, if there are use cases that may strain or overload your transactional system, then a data warehouse is recommended. Third, if there is a need from business for quick and easy query capability, data warehouse is best solution for this requirement. And finally, if there are use cases for analytics along with history data. I will cover next two questions together since they both use the same illustration. For those who have already seen my introduction to data warehousing video, you can skip ahead to question 24 as this would be a repeat. So the first question of this part is, can you explain different layers of a data warehouse? And the second question is, what all techniques and processes are used in a data warehouse and at what all layers? Typically, this would be a follow up question to the first one. So it makes sense to cover both of them together. What all types of source systems can input data into a data warehouse? We can have OLTP systems, ODS and even data warehouse. Yes, a data warehouse can send data to another data warehouse. In addition, there can be raw files directly inputted as well as data coming from outside the organization, which is ex external source. Now, typically a staging area also known as a stage is a landing zone for a data warehouse. It should ideally maintain the exact same copy as a source system. Major advantage of doing this is if there is a data issue, one can refer to stage to understand what data was sent by the source without having to engage multiple stakeholders again and again. Data in the stage is extracted and loaded by ETL processes. Please note that the transformation usually doesn't happen at this layer. If you would like to know more about ETL design patterns and how the extraction and loading takes place, do check out my other video titled 10 ETL design patterns in this very series. Now, ETL is used again this time with transformations to load data from stage into either a normalized data store, a dimensional data store or data mart. Most widely, it's a dimensional data store. A dimensional data store is a result of dimensional modeling done using facts and dimensions, which is Kimball methodology. I will be covering this in detail in my data modeling series. So please subscribe the channel to stay updated. This is essentially a data warehouse. And finally, we have a consumption layer in the data warehouse, which is what a data warehouse outputs. It can create an OLAP system for analytical or reporting purposes, send data to another data warehouse using extracts or DB connections. It can provide materialized view to business users for quick querying of data for a day today use and finally it can create a multi-dimensional database also known as a queue for analytical or business intelligence purposes. So what is data warehousing? In simple terms, it's the process to build a data warehouse. Where exactly does it fit into this picture? Right here. All these layers are a result of data warehousing. We will now understand what all actions are performed at every layer during data warehousing. First layer is source to stage. The action here is also known as data sourcing. Data transformation is usually performed in the second layer. It can also be performed before loading to consumption layer if there is a need for it. While I have limited the conversation to three layers since there is a generic, this is a generic architecture 
mostly the data warehouse stores represented by NDS, DDS and Data Mart can have many more layers within. Next, if we combine the first two layers, action performed here are data consolidation and data mapping. A data mapping is performed between source fields and target data warehouse fields using business rules and transformations required to meet them are also documented in a mapping document. At the final layer, data provisioning is done for the information to be effectively consumed. And finally, data integration, extraction, load, data quality checks, data auditing, and metadata capture or management is also performed in almost all layers of a typical data warehouse. Moving on, what is the importance of staging in a data warehouse? Okay, you will be surprised to know that a data warehouse can exist and function absolutely fine without a staging layer but that's not recommended. So, a stage can serve as a layer from which the cleansing can begin while data is being moved to the next layer. Next, if transformations or complex processing is done without a stage and on the fly, one would never be able to find out if things are happening as intended. Hence, stage acts as a placeholder in these scenarios. Next, a stage is something that retains a copy of what source system sent. There is usually no tampering done at stage level. Hence, this acts as a crucial area for data validation exercises. And finally, during incidents, the stage data is often checked to verify what was received from the source system without having to engage an external team every time there is an incident. And finally, if things go haywire, then a stage can also act as a backup of data from which data can be restored. Next up is when can a data warehouse fail to serve its purpose? The intent here is to see your experience and wisdom. Basically, here you would need to highlight mistakes that can be avoided while designing a data warehouse. So to answer this, number one reason why data warehouses fail is bad data. It is mostly a result of not having a data culture. Every data quality issue should be detected and fixed promptly. Next, if users are not getting the right data, they won't be using the system at all. This could be a result of failed data modeling where the meaning of data elements in your data warehouse is different from the source systems after modeling. Next, if the source systems have bad data or limitations, the same will flow to your data warehouse and can cause it to fail. Next. As data technologies is evolving with rapid pace, the user requirements are as well, especially in the analytics world. Not being able to keep pace with this will make your data warehouse unusable over a period of time as users will switch to other ways to do their day-to-day -day activities. And finally, the main purpose of data warehousing being quick ad hoc queries if over a period of time when your data warehouse have accumulated loads of data is unable to provide users with fast querying, the data warehouse will become unusable. Next three, we have ETL related questions. First one is what all ETL design patterns are you aware of? As a data architect, it's super important to know design patterns and particularly ETL design patterns if you are getting into a data warehousing project. So I will be listing 10 important design patterns here. Do expect follow up questions by which the interviewer would check your knowledge on this subject at depth by exploring one or two patterns. I have a dedicated video on 10 ETL design patterns where I have explained each of these 10 patterns with the help of diagrams. I will put a link in the descriptions. Do not forget to check it out if data warehousing and ETL is your core subject area. At a high level, patterns can be segregated into three categories. 
by location of ETL code, location of transformation and push versus pull. So the first three patterns are by location of ETL code which can be at a source system, target warehouse or a dedicated ETL server. The next three patterns are by location of transformation which can take place after load on stage or in memory or can take place after load popularly known as ELT. The final four patterns are two push variants via trigger and schedule and two pull variants via schedule and lock tailing. Next question, when would you choose ETL and ELT? These are two popular data integration patterns. To answer this question, ETL is usually chosen for relatively smaller data sets and when there is complex transformation requirements. The load before aspects help stage the data where complex transformations can begin along with rollback feature. Since ETL comes with another server, if cost is not a problem, then ETL can be chosen if it fits the use case. And finally, when structured data is prominent, ETL is preferred. On the contrary, ELT is chosen for relatively larger data sets. Since ELT is faster, for use cases where timing is important, ELT is preferred. Additionally, if expansion to data lake is desired in future, ELT is preferred over ETL. And finally, when semi-structured and unstructured data is prominent, ELT is a better option. Moving on, what challenges have you faced during data integration? First one is uniformity in data format. One example could be few systems may have hyphens while storing a social security number and few may not have. Making data uniform received from various sources is often a challenge. Another challenge could be that your ETL processes are taking forever to run due to ever increasing records leading to delays in making data usable. Needless to say, bad data received from various source systems is another challenge faced while data integration. And finally, lack of data dictionary, business definitions or business knowledge about data elements often leads to improper integration or mapping. Next up, can you think of some use cases for enterprise data warehouse? Okay. The intent of asking this question is twofold. First, if you have a bird's eye view of an organization or business domain. And second, if you are able to find similar things across different domains within your business and group them together. The aim of technology is always to simplify things for users and to have least number of possible IT systems. That's where enterprise data warehouses can play critical role by bringing similar type of data from across different line of businesses into one thing. So to answer this question, uh, these things can be customer or party data. Almost all line of businesses have customer data and some often have the same customer in multiple line of businesses. Second, fraud and financial crimes data is a key use case where enterprise data warehouse having capability to read across line of businesses can be very beneficial in fulfilling regulatory and reporting requirements. Another good use case is CRM. Having CRM data at one place can benefit line of business have access to more customers who they can market or to refer for more business. And finally, general ledger in an organization is at enterprise level, which has each and every transactional detail. And our final question in this video is, how can you measure success of a data warehouse? The intent of the interview here is to know if you are someone who can measure ROI and build business cases along with carrying out your data architecture work as they both go hand in hand. To answer this, best way would be to check directly with user using a predetermined scoring or feedback system. If your customers are happy, then the system should be a success. Try to quantify it if possible. Next is 
the quality of data. Establish the data quality metric to track your bad data. Primary usage of a data warehouse is user queries. The query response time can also be a factor in determining if the data warehouse is indeed achieving its purpose. And finally, try to have a predetermined return on investment methodology during design phase. So that's all in this video. All the very best for your interviews. We have one more part in this series focusing exclusively on data governance. The link is in the description. Do check it out. If you would like to see some more interview series, then let me know in the comments box which one. If you like this video and had a good learning experience, then do check out our other videos. Do like and share. Also, subscribe the channel for latest videos and trends in the world of technology and architecture. See you in the next video.